So, it's going to be another commentary commentary. This is uh, something I'm doing, trying to keep up again, because it's helpful to me to think about my own commentary in a critical sort of way. And today I'll be looking at Justin versus Marn from NCR. A couple of reasons for this. One is that it's relatively short, and another one is that it's not close. It is lopsided. Justin dominates. And... Uh, most of the times I've looked at this, I've tried to pick a match that's like kind of close, you know, but it's also interesting to think about how to approach a match that is not close. What do you do? You know, how do you approach that kind of situation? Because it's quite different. Uh, and so I want to look at that. And of course, this coming weekend, I'll be in Paris for the Red Bull Kumite, and then I'll be immediately off to Kuwait for Kuwait Battle Royale. And then the next weekend is DreamHack Austin in Austin. So it's ki kind of a crazy journey. And... I really don't want to mess those up, so I want to I want to do one of these because it's helpful for me and sort of get back into the mix. So let's jump right into it. Boing. Oh yeah, and if you haven't seen one of these things before, basically, I am constantly pausing and unpausing and critiquing myself and sometimes James uh, about like how our commentary goes. So heads up on that. Welcome back to NorCal Regionals 2016. Okay, first off. I don't look very interested. That's stupid. We have. I like the jacket plus you know the the hoodie plus the uh, tie plus the shirt though. I think that's kind of neat. More Street Fighter action coming your way, and we've got a big one coming up. Which one's coming up? Oh come on, man! You didn't even make sure that your mic is close to your mouth. Boo. This is going to be Justin Wong versus Marn. Also, I don't know why I asked him. Which one's coming up? Did I not remember? I that's very possible. It's something I gotta stay on top of better. Although not, although not always easy. Not always easy. Yeah, I thought that was kinda cute. A little look away there. <laughs> you These can see two them up there. have been friends for years and trust me, Justin is Marn's demon in so many ways. Oh yeah, oh yeah. In fact Marn just tweeted on Twitter that he's never beaten Justin. Interesting. 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 Now, that's kind of an inside joke that maybe we should have explained. Well, or just not even addressed. Um, Justin beat... Sorry. Marn beat Justin in TVC at EVO. Uh, and so we were, like, joking, like, oh, does that mean Marn didn't really beat Justin? You know, so kind of an in-joke. I don't know if that was worth it, because, like, probably 10 people got it. <laughs> so, uh, anyway. It's probably better to like actually set it up, you know, rather than to make little inside jokes like that. Okay. In tournament, in anyway. Interesting. But they've certainly played a ton of times, casually in tournaments across a host of different games, going back a dozen years. And yeah, it's almost always ended up in Justin's favor. Justin just understands the rhythm, the sort of spacing the mix-ups that Marm likes to go for and what he what he does most particularly is that he avoids them. Mm -hmm. Is that he is standing at a range that and, and moving away and not getting engaged. I feel like that's one of Justin's biggest strengths is that he can avoid engagement right. in this kind of a matchup. So that was kind of a long thing. Um, I'm glad that we that we that I did set it up but I wish that I had done that earlier instead of the little inside joke. I think that would have been a better time for that. Already we're pretty deep into the match. And while the things that I was talking about are actually happening on stream, it's in much more of a general sense that I think could have been more useful uh, if it were applied a little bit earlier. But I like how I phrase stuff. I thought the phrasing was nice. Um, maybe a little bit more variation would be nice in terms of like how I'm how I'm talking up and down and sort of cadence or whatever. Uh, but I thought I did an okay job, so eh, not, not, I'm not going to be too critical. He, he worked really well against Crazy. Justin actually plays super well against Crazy, better than a lot of players that I know. And you can see it right now, he's doing a good job with that. However, here comes Marn. I mean, so many times we've said, okay, Marn is so good at, I mean, Justin is good at this, Ricky's good at that, but then Marn comes in out of nowhere. But Justin taking that yeah. first round very go. solidly. I didn't really see any reason to interrupt James there. I mean, you know, he was also sort of saying general stuff that also applied in the moment, so I thought that was good. And I had just done the same for like 20 seconds myself, so, you yeah, know, that's, that's all good. I, I should I should correct myself because Marn corrected himself. Marn did apparently beat Justin Wong in TVC. Of course, he right. won Evo. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you hear the little mm-hmm from James. Like, I, we probably shouldn't have kept that up. Oh, and then I did it too. Okay. Right, here comes 
far. Now, so far, Justin's been pretty spot on with the... Oh, okay, oh. that's the punish. Yeah, the yeah. range is perfect there. Oh, there it is. Finally, Marin gets the command grab in there. Justin's been able to get away from that most of the time. Oh, oh wow. I really feel like you should not quick rise after that setup. I feel like I'm talking quietly. Did I not? I, I guess I didn't put the mic close enough to my mouth afterward, but... It, not just that, not just that the mic is not close enough, but I don't think there's enough activity in my voice. I think it's a little bit lackadaisical right now, so... That's something to definitely pay attention to. Oh, he beats the armor, yep! Justin has his melee timing proper! He's looking like he has a solution to Marn. Well, we've seen this many times already. Every time we say, well, looks like this guy has it, has the solution for Marn. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. Marn comes back and uh, shows that we're wrong. Man, he looks as defeated as it gets, huh? But the problem with this is... That I don't know why we didn't mention that. This is now more... Like I said, everybody else has been spending all their time going, I don't want to be the next guy losing to Marn. I don't want to be the next guy losing to Marn. Right. The problem with this now is that... Marn is probably thinking to himself, God, I don't want to lose to Justin again. I don't want to lose to Justin again. So that pressure has shifted now from Marn's opponent to Marn. And I think that's a big difference. And look at this. He's just getting beat, hit by cross-ups. All right, gets out of there. Okay. But almost done. Yeah, yeah there stun. it is. Man, this is not looking good for Marn. Uh, so I let James talk a lot because it seemed like he was doing good stuff. I didn't want to interrupt any of that. Um, again, we're talking about more generalities here. And I think this is something that I like. I like because the the match is not that close. And so, you know, calling the sort of action, the play-by-play, -play, doesn't really seem as important. You know, I mean, what would we be saying? Oh, Justin's mashing on sweep at a range where Mika has trouble punishing it well. Like, oh, because he did that like five times until he got a crush counter. And then he just did a cross up that Martin got hit by for some reason. Um, so I think that that's probably not super valuable. Instead, I would like to do what we're doing more or less, which is critiquing the bigger picture. So, oh, all right, cool, cool, cool. Oof. Is the dream over? The dream may be dead, yet Martin is even nodding his head. I always think it's important to point out what the players look like. Uh, that's why I said I wondered why we didn't address the fact that he looked so defeated earlier. Uh, I think that that adds valuable context to what's going on. And it's not always the case that the players are put on camera. If they're on camera, it's probably less important that we would remark on it, because you can see as somebody watching that they look defeated. But I do, I do also always keep in mind there are people who watch while they're or listen while they're doing other stuff. I do that myself sometimes, and so it's helpful to know. Oh man, like as I'm doing work. Oh really, Marn looks defeated too. Oh yikes, you know, that's. I think there's value in that. Um, again, not as much if the if the people at home can see, and if only we can see, we can always see the players when we're sitting and you know, when we're commentating. Uh, but they're not always on camera. So uh, anyway. I like that we addressed it there. We probably don't need to address it every time, but I thought that was good. Anyway, let's move on. Wow, oh, beautiful distance on that. It can be safe, the fierce one, if it hits at the very end. And here we go, Martin into the corner, almost done. He should be able to get stunned, but the counter hit again on the standing strong, pushes him too far away for that. And that's then gonna save rise. Justin. The quick rise again, and, and again, into a cross that's a You know, I don't know that I needed to interrupt there. Uh, I liked how James was addressing it. I thought he had a good quality to his voice. I thought he was uh, saying more or less what we needed to say. I, th I do think it's important to note that he got hit by, or it's valuable, at least, to note that he got hit by the cross-up setup again, because that's like the third or fourth time already, and that's weird. And it's sort of a an indication of how out of it he might be feeling. So that's okay, but I think that... That might be something I could have saved for between rounds rather than interrupting James. Third time. Third time it's happened now. And right in the super. Is this going to be able to kill? Well, it's not going to stun. I don't think it's going to kill. Yeah, very close though. I still feel like I'm very quiet. I don't like that. Stun is still on deck, but who cares? Life is what's more important. Justin? That, that was one of those times I said stun is still on deck, but there's, you know, he's going to die, so who cares? 
one of those times where I looked at stun bar before I looked at the meter and started remarking on it. And so mid sentence, I was in my mind, I was like, oh, but stun doesn't matter because he's just going to die. So I, I had to try to save it. Uh, I should probably just try to pay better attention to what the meters look like instead of trying to save it like that. But to the extent that I don't, I thought that was a like a good save. Oh, so fortunate for Justin that, that that traded. Been, if that had been jump fierce, yeah, maybe a different story. Mm -hmm. But hard to expect that to, to come. And just like that, Justin 2-0 over Marn. But Marn, the people believe the magic is there. Yeah, I think this is fine. Um, typically, I don't want to. Uh, what's what? How to phrase this? I don't want to artificially pump anything up, but at the same time, I don't want to make it uninteresting or or let it remain uninteresting. Maybe is the better phrasing for that. So I like that James tries to pump it up. I think that's I think that's cool. Um, obviously, you can't go nuts about it, but uh, I thought that was good. It's Mika. It's Marn. Let's go. Yeah, that was cool. I think it might be time to understand that it's not Hogwarts, James. This is the real world. <laughs> I'm not sure magic is real. Well, that was a pretty good, pretty good counter. You know, it's not it's not saying outright that look for sure Justin's gonna win this, which eh, we got, everybody knew. Marn knew that. Marn knew that. He sat down. You could already see his face. Uh, but it's not explicitly saying that. It's sort of a more. It's a little bit more clever way to do it. It leaves a little bit of ambiguity in there because uh, we don't know what's going to happen, of course. Could be that Marn makes the big comeback. Uh, so, yeah, I thought that that was, I thought that was done pretty well. I believe, David. <laughs> okay, I believe. Okay, well, I mean, I want to see a close set, of course. But the way that Justin is playing right now. Okay, wait. Yeah, again, I, I, think, I think that's fine. Um, I, I don't want to pretend like it's not one-sided. I want to I want to be real to the situation. While at the same time, I don't want to pronounce it as being over. So I thought that was a pretty good mix, sort of in between. Pick up strong. Oh, here we go! Big damage. Yep, getting in there. Stun? Not quite. Great block. Anything will do it. Oh, he went in too hard. Wow! And Justin says no. Nope. Justin says no. You cannot. That was good. I'm glad he used that line. <laughs> uh, I was fixing to be the like the hype dude on that. You could tell the timbre of my voice, uh, the quality of my voice, and and uh, I was gonna. But then I heard James, and he was doing it too, and I was like, "Yeah, oh, you got it, man. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll I'll quit talking." I thought he did a good job, so yay. And now one more round away from the end of the dream, from the end of the run. Can Marn make the comeback of all comebacks? Yeah, I think again this I think that's good. I think that's a good way to deal with it. It's pretty clear what's gonna happen, but it's not certain. So we, you you have to, I think, strike this balance between being real with people, not make it up, not you know, start proclaiming that oh Marn's gonna make the comeback, whatever. But asking a question is fine. Phrasing in that sort of in sort of that sort of manner seems seems good to me. Yeah, cool, cool. Justin is not being nice right now. <laughs> okay, here's the slide. Okay. That's my oh well maybe still a chance voice. Yeah, that's what that is. Great defense. See Justin not faltering under that pressure from Marn. Oh wait, here we go. Oh, I like the sequence. So Justin gonna activate V Trigger just to get himself out of there. Blocks the charge drop kick. Very plus on block. Okay. Nice. Wow. Beat the armors. You know I've talked about this in the past, but I don't I don't like coming back from not talking for a little while with something as bland as okay and nice. And I always want to avoid that situation. I think I've done reasonably at it in this video so far, but right there I did it twice, like in two seconds. So that's. That could be better. Again, again. Yeah. Oh, and you knew that was coming. Yeah. Good I also want to tr to to try to not use O or O before a lot of statements. Sometimes it's fine. It shouldn't be excised completely. 
but I do think that I do it too often. So that's something to work on. The corner, Just here like we that. go. Think it's a good switch? And stayed in the front! Stayed in the front! The dream is alive! The dream is alive! I thought that was cool that uh, Marn did take a round, and I thought that James capitalized pretty well on it in terms of commentary. One thing that I've noticed that I told him about uh, after, that was actually after this tournament, was that I noticed that he, oftentimes after he says something like funny or, or intense, such as at the end of that, you will hear him go, <laughs> or <clears throat> very common, very common little little sort of verbal tick that uh, I think he needs to work on on getting rid of this is the beginning it could be this is where it all starts yeah I think you could kind of hear it silently in the background <sighs> you know something like that I'm trying to beat his demon again the quick rise yeah, but that time rise. Justin stayed from the front yeah so even though this is a blow up, there are some things that we've noted that we've noted in terms of gameplay. Typically, when things are closer, we often bring back gameplay ideas. I will note in the third game something that I saw in the first game that maybe I saw again in the second. You know, recurring themes. I think that's really important to bring up. Uh, it's it's all it's super important to remember that as the player and and uh, as the commentator and as the person watching and trying to get something out of this. It's, it's much more valuable for entertainment, for learning, all the purposes, if you recall those important situations. So that's something that I try to do a lot. But in this case, when the match is, is pretty one-sided, there have been fewer things. I mean, like I said, what am I going to say? Justin's mashing sweep all the time. Um, that's not very valuable. But the fact that Marn keeps quick-rising, even though Karen gets a good setup after that, uh, or in that, in that quick-rise... With kind of an ambiguous looking cross up that has hit like three or four times and he's still quick rising i think that is important enough to bring up rather you know most of this set the commentary has been more general it's been more about uh you know being real with people about how it is lopsided simultaneously allowing the possibility for the comeback or or being excited about the possibility of a comeback especially at the end of the previous round so we haven't really been talking about particulars in gameplay that much. But I, I never want to lose that. I never want to lose that. And and that that is an indicator to me, the fact that he keeps quick rising, of him just sort of being mentally out of it. He's not making the adaptations. Marn, the way that he plays is is somewhat like that in the sense that he it's very difficult to dissuade him from doing something he wants to do. But that said, he's a smart player in the sense that he makes he, he makes adaptations even while continuing to like sort of doggedly pursue whatever his objective is, typically. And that's how he got to this place, to to whatever this is, third or fourth place, whatever he ended up at uh, in this tournament. But now he's just falling apart. So anyway, long-winded way to say I like that we're, that we're bringing that part of it up. I wish that we, we would maybe flesh that out a little bit like that, but uh, in terms of what it means, but maybe that's something better done between rounds or, or after. I don't know. I haven't seen Marn go for a lot of command throws. Justin's been blocking a lot. Yeah, see, we're, we're, not, we're noting some of those things, and I think that's good. That's true. Oh, no! Got hit out of the air, which means... Although my little, that's true, didn't add anything to that. Justin's going to be able to punish. Here comes Marn. Trying to clap it. No crouching strong anti-air. Oh, boy. Look how, look how Marn is moving around right now. Yeah, oh, he's, he's baited he's that so out preemptive. so many times. You know, we've seen this super kill do so much damage it is it's gonna do it it's the end of the run for, for marn well you know what marn I, oh let me just had a great run like we said he made it out of the toughest pool in ncr in fact one of the toughest pools that i can ever recall yeah i think that that was pretty well done uh i i gave i let james handle it because he had been doing it uh in that set a lot of the time and he'd been doing a good job so cool man keep it up um, but then I like that I was ready for something like immediately afterward. It doesn't need to continue to be the hype stuff because James just did it. Uh, so I think now it's time for a little bit of uh, of criticism of what happened. I, I don't mean in the sense of like being negative. I mean in the sense of of uh, uh, talking about what could have gone differently or, or thinking about, uh, you 
know, it's, it's sort of the sense of literary criticism where it's not necessarily negative. It's just a review with some interesting ideas. Anyway. In Winterside. Mm -hmm. And then after that. He... Oh, well, I guess that's it. Um, okay. But I think that's. I think that's, that was pretty well done for the most part. Some things I wanted to change include fewer O's and O's at the start of sentences. Um, oh, that's something I want to excise too. The ums, the uhs. It's something that I do a lot. It's it's a space filler. And it's something a lot of people do in just normal conversation. But I think that I should try to be a little bit better about getting rid of that stuff. In general, though, I thought that we did pretty well. I like how we approached it in terms of uh, it being a one-sided matchup and that requiring a little bit of a different commentary style. And I think that we honestly did a pretty good job. I mean, there are some things that I am critical about in there of both me and James. Obviously, we could be doing better. But uh, yeah, in general, I thought that went uh, pretty well.